readers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire Books, and today I wanted to make a video about one of my favorite topics, which is classical literature. So I was a classics major, I now teach Latin, and Latin and Greek literature have brought me so much joy in my life, but sometimes it can be a little bit inaccessible to people who aren't in college taking classes about Greek and Roman history or language. So I thought what I would do for this video today is collect five pieces of classical literature that I think are relatively accessible and that would be enjoyable for somebody just reading stuff on their own. One of the big considerations that went into this is that while I love a very wide range of Greek and Latin literature for historical purposes, I try to choose things that are actually just straight up entertaining so that if you're just reading something for the fun of it, you actually get to have some fun. So before we get started, I do want to put a massive trigger warning on basically all of these recommendations. Ancient Romans were not very sensitive to the humanness of other people. Um, you're going to see a lot of misogyny. Several of these recommendations contain incidents of sexual assault. They're inappropriate relationships in terms of age. Basically, Roman literature is blanket problematic, and I love it anyway, but I also am aware of its shortcomings. So if you don't want to read things that are potentially disturbing or rude or just really insensitive, then you don't want to read these. One of the authors I'm going to recommend in this video is Ovid, and I'm going to include an article below that discusses teaching Ovid alongside the Me Too movement because that's something that has been really alive in my field in the last few years. But yes, you've been warned. That said, I absolutely love this literature. I also wanted to recommend things that were not the Iliad or the Odyssey or Oedipus Rex because those are all great and I highly recommend that you read them. I'm a huge fan of Homer. Um, I'm about to reread the Odyssey myself, but I didn't recommend those because that is classical literature that I think that a lot of people have already been exposed to and I didn't think that it was necessary to push them again when I could maybe recommend something that's a bit newer to you or a little more off the beaten path. But in no particular order, without further ado, here's what I think you should try. First up, we have the poems of Catullus. So Catullus is commonly assigned in upper level Latin classes in high school because he talks about a lot of themes that are understandable and fun and enjoyable for really anyone. And so he's, his Latin is good to give to students, but also the topics are really good. So if you read the poems of Catullus, some of them are absolutely filthy and we cannot discuss them in polite company. While many of them center on Catullus's relationship with Lesbia, who is a married woman who's not actually named Lesbia and he is having a torrid affair with her. And so he's kind of like an ancient Taylor Swift. He's writing about his breakups and his moments of love. And this kind of emotional poetry is new to Latin literature with Catullus. So if you want to read about bad breakups, poignant poems about the death of a brother, kind of rude and silly poems about going to parties or having rivalries with other men, Catullus is the one for you. The poems are short, they are punchy, and very often they are good for a laugh. Second, I would recommend Ovid's Metamorphoses. So Ovid is Publius Ovidius Naso. He's another Roman poet. He eventually was exiled for being involved with some stuff he shouldn't have been during the reign of Augustus. But before then, and even after then, he wrote some really entertaining poems. The reason I recommend the Metamorphoses specifically is that it's got a lot of really lovely mythological stories in it. And so if you want to absorb myth, but at a level that's higher than basic Greco-Roman gods, then Ovid is a really, really good choice. And as an author, the poetry is just absolutely beautiful. And you'll end up surprising yourself with how much you enjoy it. And even though it's at this very high register, it's in an epic meter, it's these very lush mythological stories, Ovid is also very saucy and funny. And it does come through even in his epic poetry. If you want a really good gross out moment, uh, at one point Ovid retells the story of Pyramus and Thisbe, which you may be familiar with if you've read Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night's Dream. It's kind of like a proto Romeo and Juliet story. But uh, at one point, Pyramus, the, the man in the relationship, believes that a lion has killed Thisbe, his, his would-be love. And so he decides to 
cut his own throat beneath a mulberry tree. And Ovid describes it as like a pipe bursting and Pyramus's blood like goes all over the mulberries, which used to be white. And that is why they're now purple. So if you want some high register mythology with some also messed up content, then Ovid is your man. Now we'll move on to the only Greek entry on this list. For some reason, I seem to feel that Latin literature is more accessible to a modern audience. That may be completely wrong upon further thought, but uh, we're going to go with it. And (laughs) uh, I want to recommend Euripides' play Medea. The reason that I recommend it. So if you don't know the Medea story, I guess I won't spoil it for you, but it has a tragic and horrible ending. But what's going on is that Medea has been rejected by her husband, Jason, who for whom she has given everything. So if you know the full mythological story, Medea leaves her homeland, helps Jason become a hero. She uses her magic to boost him on every step of the way in his hero's quest against her own father's wishes because she was princess of the land where Jason goes to get the golden fleece. And on the way out, she helps him escape by murdering her own brother, cutting him into pieces and throwing him in the water so that her father will stop his pursuit of them in his ships in order to collect her brother's body parts for burial. So Medea has gone the extra mile for this man who turns out to be trash because he wants to put her aside and get a new woman. And the the couple's arguments and the bitterness between Medea and Jason is just so fresh. Really, it feels contemporary. And Honestly, even though Medea does some terrible things, really terrible, you find yourself really sympathizing with her in a lot of ways because Jason is such a tool. And I thought that the way that Euripides did this was, it's it's hilarious, it's frustrating, it's tragic. And if you're looking for something that you can relate to, but is also ancient, I think that Medea is a very good play to try. So fourth recommendation, this is a personal favorite of mine. I absolutely love it. It is a story called The Golden Ass. It's a donkey sort of ass, not that other kind, although I'm sure there are plenty of asses throughout that novel, now that I think about it. Uh, But it's by Lucius Apuleius, and it is a story of a man who encounters a witch, gets turned into a donkey, and then goes on a series of misadventures all throughout the Roman world. And it is fun, and it's playful, and, you know, it's just this really hilarious ancient novel. And reading about the misadventures of the main character is really enjoyable, and I think it's still enjoyable for somebody just living in modern times with not a whole lot of context about the Roman world. I will warn you that, like most Roman literature that's actually fun, there are some definite not-safe-for-work parts in here, including a donkey show, because what did you expect? in a Roman novel about a man that got turned into a donkey. So, you know, be warned. But I think that The Golden Ass is a classic. I really like it. And actually, I kind of want to read it again now that I've started talking to you about it. So I may do that soon. A translation of this one that I really like is by Sarah Rudin. Uh, She writes these very modern, very slangy translations. And I know that some people prefer a more proper Roman feeling translation, but I think that the spirit of her work is really fun. And I think that if you're not encountering a lot of Roman literature in your life, that her translations might be particularly good as a choice for you. And her notes are quite informative. She's also a translator of a version of the last item on my list, which is the Satyricon. It is a partial, so you won't get the whole thing, none of us do, it's a tragedy, novel that was written under the time of Nero by Petronius, who was Nero's, basically his master of style and taste. So Petronius was this kind of sassy, sarcastic, very classy man who for a long time really got to entertain others and kind of be Mr. Man About Town. Um, Nero eventually convicted him of treason, which just happens if you get too close to Nero for too long. And so what Petronius did was instead of go out sad and, you know, let Nero execute him, he decided to go out with a bang. And so he basically slit his wrists, but he rebound them so he would slowly bleed out through the night. He had an epic party where he said goodbye to everybody. He ate and drank a lot. He gave lavish gifts, told people off that he didn't care about anymore. And then he went to sleep and died. Also, unlike lots of people of the time, Petronius absolutely refused to suck up to Nero in his will and instead revealed how awful he was. And, you know, mad respect for Petronius. Uh, The Satyricon itself is a hilarious novel about the misadventures of these guys going about Rome and seeing all of the strange people and sites there are to see. Probably the best piece in the entire novel is the dinner of Trimalchio, which is this dinner party that's given by a nouveau riche man 
who um, is basically very, very wealthy, but also very uneducated and in Petronius's eyes, trashy. And so reading his very sarcastic descriptions of Trimachio not knowing anything about mythology and getting really upset about the thought of his own funeral that he's already planned out and he like puts everybody else through parts of it. It's just a total scream. It's so funny. And if you want a taste of Roman sarcasm and to read something that is just absolutely hilarious, then the Satyricon is a great choice. I will warn you that it also has some parts that are very odd. Um, there are eunuchs, and one of the main characters has a distinctly underage boyfriend because in ancient Rome, that was not considered as offensive as it is now. So massive trigger warnings for this one, maybe even more than for a lot of the other ones. But if you want to read something short and funny and rude and Roman, then the Satyricon is a fantastic choice. So those are five recommendations that I would make of classical literature that is accessible and fun to read while still giving you some of that good ancient society flavor. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you decide to try any of these texts or if you'd like to do some sort of read along with me, I'd really be interested to know. So leave me a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe and happy reading. <music>